Welcome, welcome to the Late Show, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. And I gotta say, there he is. This crowd is electric and alive on this planet tonight. I'm on my vibe. I'm my vibe. They want to hear me talk about the big story everybody's talking about right now. Continues to be the chaos surrounding the recent poorly handled regime change over at Jeopardy. <laughs> now, before you say, Stephen, the Late Show is the most prestigious of all the late night chuckle fests. What do you do talking about the game show Jeopardy and who might host it? Well, I have one thing to say to you. I don't know. <laughs> all I know is that the mission statement of this show is that we talk about what everyone's talking about, and for some reason, everyone is talking about this, possibly to avoid talking about everything else. <laughs> And now that I've established, that's it. Nailed it. That's it. Bing, bang, write that down. Now that I've established beyond a doubt that this item is number one on the national conversation, I'll fill you in on the deets. You see, Jeopardy recently conducted a months-long search for their new host, led in part by executive producer Michael Richards, also known as Bland. James <laughs> Bland. During, during their search, the show tried out everyone from friend of the show Anderson Cooper to friend of the show LeVar Burton to friend of the show Katie Couric to Dr. Oz. Which is why people were a bit surprised when in the end, as their permanent weeknight host, the executive producers of Jeopardy selected executive producer Mike Richards. Wow! What are the odds? <laughs> exactly the same as me getting named Stephen Colbert Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. <laughs> Suck it, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> America's leading game show journalists were stunned. Including the Huffing Po, whose headline blared, So the Jeopardy guest host rotation was apparently all for show. <laughs> Wait a second, are you telling me that a television show did something that was for show? <laughs> I'm so disillusioned. Are those housewives even real? <laughs> now, it's only getting worse uh, for Richards after resurfaced podcast audio revealed that in 2014. Mike Richards made crude comments about women, Jews, and Haiti. Ooh. Looks like Richards' job might be in <laughs> jeopardy. <laughs> uh, so what did he say? Well, in one podcast, Richards asked his co-hosts, both younger women, whether they had ever taken nude photos, saying, like booby pictures? Booby pictures? Is this a man about to become the host of America's most beloved quiz show? Or a 12-year-old boy trying to sneak into an R-rated movie? <laughs> yes, I would like one grown-up ticket to your 2 p.m. booby picture. <laughs> I've been told some of these uh, boobies have uh, the niblets. <laughs> In response to these new revelations, Richards released a statement saying, it's more than clear that my attempts to be funny and provocative were not acceptable and I have removed the episodes. That's an interesting apology. I know I drove drunk and plowed through your rose garden, and to prove I'm sorry, I've recycled my empty liquor bottles. <laughs> Speaking of disastrous transitions, <laughs> what is Afghanistan? <laughs> totally worth it. Totally worth it. 100%. No one's really sure at this point. The withdrawal did not go quite as well as Joe Biden had hoped. And unfortunately for him, there were TV cameras there. He really should have evacuated those first. <laughs> In a poll taken on Friday, Biden's approval rating was 53%. But over the weekend, his approval fell faster than Kabul, plummeting to 46%. So yesterday, Biden sat down with George Stephanopoulos for his first one-on-one -on -one interview since the takeover. And he thought the debacle went according to plan. 
The idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. Granted, it took two days to take control of the airport. We have control of the airport now. We've all seen the pictures. We've seen those hundreds of people packed into a C-17. We've seen Afghans falling. That was four days ago, five days ago. Look, Jack. <laughs> come on, man. Get real. No, I'm serious. No, come on, I'm not kidding, y'all. I'm not kidding around, folks. No one remembers what happened four or five days ago. All that stuff is ancient Monday. But I do remember every single thing my dad said to me in 1952. He told me, he said, Joey, when you leave Afghanistan, it's gonna be messier than a pack of dogs eating a blueberry pie. Anyway, <laughs> what was I talking about? Who knows at this point? It was four or five seconds ago. Come on, man. In other political news, the Delta variant has stormed Capitol Hill. Today, three senators announced within hours of each other that they had tested positive for the coronavirus. Oh, no! I hope the United States Senate is not famously full of the oldest people on the planet. <laughs> what? But... <laughs> the infected senators in question are Roger Wicker, Republican of Mississippi, Angus King, independent from Maine, and John Hickenlooper, Democrat from Colorado. A Republican, a Democrat, and an independent. Well, at least the virus is bipartisan. <laughs> Clearly, some of those senators are reaching across the aisle. And then, apparently not washing their hands afterwards. <laughs> We're getting new signs every day about what does and doesn't prevent COVID. For instance, today we learned those anti-COVID plastic barriers probably don't help and may make things worse. Wait, wait a second. Have they ever worked? <laughs> because for decades, that has also been our lone salad bar protection technology. <laughs> that's disturbing. I am, okay, that's it, I'm off salads. I'm just, I have, I'm off salads for safety's sake. That buffet I'm off salads sick. unless the salad has first been sterilized in a deep fat fryer. Unfortunately, COVID cases continue to spike, especially along the Gulf Coast, where the so-called Redneck Riviera <laughs> is now a virus hotspot. Now, if you've never been there, it's kind of like the French Riviera, but instead of the Cannes Film Festival, it's the Show Us Your Cans Festival. <laughs> that was, that picture, that right there, John. I don't mess with that one. That was dangerously close to a booby picture. <laughs> Health officials are blaming the spike on the area's unabated tourism and a disregard for basic health precautions. Coincidentally, that's also Florida's state motto. <laughs> People, sounds better in Latin. It's a little classier. <laughs> People are ignoring the CDC recommendations. For example, don't go to Florida. Also, in a bar down there called The Hangout, Patrons crammed together, unmasked, singing Cotton Eye Joe. Of course, the lyrics there are a little different. No vaccines for Cotton Eye Joe. He's got tetanus and polio. He caught COVID two days ago. Now I can't smell my chicken gumbo. <laughs> Despite all the COVID concerns, many golf courses, bars, go kart tracks, and hotels were full. And one shopper after another walked through the mouth of a giant fake shark. If only there was some kind of metaphor for willingly strolling into the jaws of doom. <laughs> the Delta variant, mm. the Delta variant, huh. gone in the way. The Delta variant has hit the entire world, which apparently includes England, where a whopping 94% of adults have COVID-19 antibodies and roughly 80.7% of their adult population has been fully vaccinated because they've really focused on reaching vulnerable populations, which for them includes people over 50. So by British standards, I'm a vulnerable population. <laughs> also by British standards, I did not gain 14 pounds over the pandemic. I gained one stone. <laughs> Personally, I am impressed. Mm -hmm. Looking good. I'm impressed with how well England is doing with the COVID vaccine, so I'd like to say something to my British viewers. Meet me over at the Brit Cam. Hello, Gov. 
Thanks for clicking on the old telly. Just Mary popping in to say, please take us back. <laughs> that whole revolution thing, we were just having a laugh. We were taking the piss out of your bangers and mash. We're gobsmacked by your vaccination rate. Just chuffed, blimey. <laughs> Let's leg it to the pub for elevenses and fish and chips, in it. <laughs> we'll do whatever you want. We'll call soccer football. We'll call math maths. <laughs> we'll call Piers Morgan a journalist. <laughs> God save the queen. A toss the old bird. Not sure which side you land on now. Chim Chimarie! <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. My guests are the father-daughter team of Sean and Dylan Penn. But when we return...